This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the 2020 Razor Blade 15 Base Edition. Uh, you probably know this already, they come in two editions. The base model is, well, as you might guess, the more affordable one, and the advanced is the one that is a bit thinner, has a bigger battery, costs more money, comes with higher and GPU options. So for those of you who are looking to get into a Razor Blade, you know, just because it's the base edition doesn't mean it's a weak sauce product. We're going to look at it now. Yes, this is an expensive laptop, and I know some of you are watching this just to learn more about cutting-edge technology. Speaking of learning more, thanks to our sponsor for this video, Blinkist, and they distill over 3,000 works of nonfiction down to 15-minute bite size. You get all you need to know from that book, basically, either in written format, words that you can read, or in podcast style, you can listen to them kind of books. So like you, probably, uh, you're into technology, so am I. So I wanted to learn more about some tech subjects. So uh, there was an interesting book on the surveillance and capitalism combination there. So like Google and Facebook making money off of you, basically, and what you gain and what you lose in that. They also have some very interesting titles about artificial intelligence, the pros, the cons, the things that you should look out for. First hundred people to go to our link in the description are going to get unlimited access for one week to try out free. Yeah, totally free. And you'll get 25% off if you decide you want the full membership. Now, back to our video. So this edition starts at $1,600. That gets you an NVIDIA GTX 1660, so that's not the most exciting thing right there. All models have the same core i7 six-core CPU in the base model, Intel 10th generation. Uh, but if you go with our model, instead of the $1,600 base model, spend $1,800 and you get an RTX 2060. And now we're getting really more interesting here, particularly if you want to game or do some 3D rendering work, that sort of thing. Inside we have, like I said, that six core i7 CPU. If you want the eight core, well, then you're gonna to have to go for the advanced edition instead. We have a 65 watt hour battery. We have quite a lot of ports for something that's relatively speaking, fairly thin and fairly light for a 15 inch pro app slash gaming laptop. We have ethernet, we have Thunderbolt 3. You don't get a full size SD card slot, which is the odd thing here. You do on the advanced though. I guess you just didn't have room for that though. There's also HDMI 2.0B. You get the idea. You can see all the ports by looking at the laptop yourself on screen right now. For displays, you have two options. The one that we have, which is a full HD 144 hertz refresh display, so fast refresh for gaming, yay that. It's the same good LG display that they've been using as full sRGB coverage and around, you know, 75% of Adobe RGB. If you want that 300 hertz refresh panel, which is mm, it's probably overkill for most cases, again, look to the advanced model. But there's also a 4K display with wide gamut OLED. And as far as I know, Razer says that one is non-touch. So I'd expect it to be matte. With the advanced edition, it's a touch screen. So those of you who want touch and don't mind glossy, then look at the advanced edition. Not much has changed here in terms of design. So this one uses, instead of a vapor chamber cooler, it uses a more traditional heat pipe cooling system versus the advanced model. You might say it doesn't need quite as much cooling because the GPUs don't get up there, but you know they do get up there. You've got the RTX 2060 and ours, and there's an RTX 2070 Max-Q also. In fact, if you want the 4K display, they make you get the RTX 2070 Max-Q. Uh, the, the cooling solution is competent, that's for sure. So playing games, the usual thing, of course, you, you'll hit close to thermal maximum on the core temperatures for the CPU, uh, but the average temperatures are below that safely enough. But you'll hear the fan on this, and it's not quiet. It's not as bad as the vacuum cleaners of old back in the Blade 14 days or something like that, but it does typically make more noise than the advanced edition, and a little bit more noise than average when doing everyday kind of work, too. It's not going to drown out the room or something like that when you're doing work in Excel, but you'll you'll hear it. Performance as ever is competent. This is a refresh. Not a lot has changed here. Same chassis design, same basic thermal design, and performance on this is where you would expect it to be for the specs in the machine, which is to say quite good. So it's very compact. It's very classy looking. I mean, that's the selling point of razor blades. A lot of people write to me and they ask what laptop to buy, and then they always throw in the Blade 50 and they say, because it looks so darn good. So there's that. You do have to like what you're looking at when you're using it, don't you? And for performance, you're going to be able to do higher ultra settings on any modern game. Or if you're buying this to do rendering work, you're getting into 3D design, that sort of thing. It's perfectly awesome for doing that sort of work, too, while still being somewhat portable and adult-looking, not gamery, that sort of thing. Other than the green snakehead logo, but hey, I'm okay with that. When it comes to colors, 
The keyboard here is an RGB backlit keyboard, and you know the drill. With the base model, you get a single color at a time. You can choose from any color you want, but it's either going to be green all the time, or white all the time, or some shade of red that you like all of the time. The secondary keys are backlit. Yeah, that razor took care of that a while ago. And you have a very good Microsoft Precision trackpad. As ever with the keyboard, it's not my favorite. I would like more tactile feel and travel, and it's the price you pay for making a powerful gaming laptop this thin. You know the drill. But as other keyboards become more like this, then, well, it doesn't seem out of place amongst its competitors either. But if you really want a deep key travel ThinkPad or Steel Series on MSI kind of feel from the days of the thicker MSI laptops, well, this wouldn't be it. As ever, there's Razer Synapse software, and it lets you set, you got three different choices there for the balanced mode, which is where we do most of our benchmark testing, the gaming mode, which is where we do most of our gaming testing, and 3D benchmark testing, and a content creator one. The content creator one boosts the CPU, the gaming one boosts the GPU, but not both at the same time. And also, it lets you control the keyboard backlighting settings, all that sort of stuff. And if you have any peripherals, it's your one-stop place to control everything. If you want to sync your lights up on your external mouse or a keyboard or whatever, you get the idea. The battery on this is 65 watt hour and it comes with a 230 watt charger for our RTX 2060 model. And keeping with Razer's sense of style, even the charger is kind of bondage chic looking. It's not bad looking. And yes, they took care of the, the capacitor wine issue in the chargers a long time ago. So this one is silent. Uh, if you go with the advanced, you actually, despite the fact it's thinner, you actually get a bigger 80 watt hour battery, which again, this is the way it's been rolling for some time. So 65 watt hour is okay, and this does have NVIDIA Optimus switchable graphics, so it'll use the Intel UHD 630 graphics when you're not gaming and pushing it hard. And so battery life on this is, it's going to depend what you do. But for light productivity work with brightness set at 150 nits, we averaged around five and a half to six hours on a charge. So it's okay for something this powerful, that's fair. Let's put it that way. And if you want more, there's the advanced. The speakers on this are unchanged from last gen, so they're fairly loud for a 15-inch laptop, I'll give you that. And a bit more bass than average, too, for a 15-inch even gaming laptop. So they're reasonably good. As ever, taking off the bottom cover is delightfully easy. Torx T5 screws, unscrew those. They're screwed in a little tight, but that's it. And then grab from this area and lift up comes right off. No plastic clips to fight with or anything like that. That's the underside right there. Obvious grill openings there. Not as giant as what MSI does these days and some others with the whole area being covered in ventilation, but that is, well, what it is. So our two fans right here, and not immense fans, but given the size of the chassis, it's probably about as best as they could do. And though they'd say that this is a heat pipe based cooling system and not vapor chamber, that is one big looking heat sink over here and over here. So that's quite adequate and nice four corners screwed down there, no tripod heat sink. So mm, that's nice. And unlike the advanced edition, there's no display cable running over the heatsink, which always made me feel a little nervous. But I own a Blade 15 Advanced, actually, and I've not had any problems with the display cable. That's it. Two RAM slots right here, DDR4, 2933 MHz, and you can go all the way up to 64 gigs if you want. Razor ships it with 16, so it's up to you to upgrade it if you want more than that. With the SSD, the max they sell, I believe, is 512 gig with it. It's a fast NVMe SSD right there. You can upgrade that yourself, and there is a second M.2 SSD slot that's compatible with both NVMe and SATA SSDs. Our socketed Intel Wi-Fi 6 card is here. It's an AX201, good card. And here's our 65 watt hour battery right there. So that's the 2020 edition of the Razer Blade 15 base model. And as always, the things to like about it are the build quality, which is impeccable. Really built solid, no glaring seams showing, anything like that. All metal, CNC, aluminum design, that nice chill black color, and lots of ports on this, and pretty good performance too. The fan. You're going to hear it a little bit more often. You're not getting as advanced a cooling solution on this. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.